All right, YouTube. So, by popular demand, I will now be going into a thorough and extended history of the original Xbox and why it's the best. Yeah, that's just a joke. We're not doing that. Why we're really here today is to talk about the PS2 and what to do about a disc that does not spin up or only does half a spin. Now, to save time, I'm assuming you know how to take apart your PS2. If you do not, there are a million videos already covering this, so I'm going to quickly take mine apart and we can jump right in. All right, now that we are inside the case, the next thing we're gonna do is, you guessed it, take this apart down to the board. So in order to do that, there are several screws along the perimeter that need to be removed. Once removed, we can simply lift out the console and the innards from the case. Keep in mind when doing this, you want to make sure you are very gentle as some of these components are getting quite old, fragile, and have the risk of disintegrating. So just make sure you use caution and care when lifting the innards out of the case. And once that's done, I will meet you on the other side. All right, so your console should now look something like this. And in order to access the actual motherboard itself underneath here, we're still gonna have to remove a couple more screws as well as the heat shield. Now I'm showing this because most videos do not demonstrate this and only require you to lift off the disk drive cover to clean out dust. So on this part, there are four screws here, keeping the PSU board firmly attached to the heat shield. So one, two, three, and four. Once those are unscrewed, you can then simply lift off the power supply board. Keep in mind there is a connector underneath, so be gentle in doing so. Ta-da! If your PS2 has ever acted strangely, while not necessarily broken, but emitting odd behavior, very commonly, one of these cables can be either loose or completely undone. In particular, that top ribbon cable, which everyone knows is the most irritating cable as it is responsible for the power button. So during the reassembly, always make sure these are securely fastened before putting the screws back in. Next, there are five screws on the heat shield that need to be removed in order to gain access to the motherboard in its entirety. When you remove these screws, make sure you exercise caution when removing the heat shield, as there are two little clips on each side also securing the panel to the plastic case, which need to be released in order for the heat shield to safely be removed. The two clips needing to be released before proceeding are here. And there's one on the other side, right there. So make sure you take a flathead screwdriver and carefully release them before proceeding. I always forget this screw. In earlier steps, when you remove the screws attached to the power supply plug and the fan assembly, there is another screw under there that also secures the heat sink to the board that needs to be removed. While not required, a good idea while you're here already is to pull out a multimeter if you have one, set it to the continuity setting, which is that little wavelength that kind of looks like a sound wave. And we're simply going to attach one lead to each side of the fuse, and we just want to hear a beep, just like this. That lets us know that the fuse is still good and in proper working order. Now that all the screws from the top side have been removed, as well as the screws holding the caddy in place and the two metal clips also holding the metal panel in place, we are ready to remove this plastic heat shield, revealing the four remaining screws we need to undo, as well as the fan 
connector on the motherboard, which is this little guy right here. We want to make sure when we, or I should say when you, undo the fan connector that you are very careful as it is very, 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 very fragile. And those are very small wires, which means they can come loose very easily, which causes a whole other world of problems. So just make sure you're careful when you proceed with this step. Once you remove the fan assembly, you will see that there is one final metal clip that needs to be released, at which point the metal panel will lift right off, exposing the board in all its glory. Voila. So after all that work, you may be sitting there scratching your head, wondering why I encouraged you to take your PS2 apart right down to its board. Yeah, that was a bit of a feat, wasn't it? But congratulations, you're here. So, the reason we're doing this is we want to inspect this right here. A lot of times, if this cable is damaged, if it is not seated properly, or it has wiggled loose over the years, or sometimes the pins just disintegrate because of the age, that can all contribute to why your PS2 will not, the laser won't spin up. So we're gonna undo this. It's just a flip up tab, just like that. And we're going to take out the cable, just like that. What we're gonna do next is put the Pan the panel back on, and this is going to protect it while we flip it over to do the work we need to do. So if mine would just click back on, just like that, we can now gently be very, 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 very careful with this step. But we're going to flip it back over. I left my disk drive lid on just to ensure that nothing got um, moved around too much. In the case it did, it wasn't hitting a hard surface. So now that we have this here, I'm going to remove my lid and that should expose the disk drive assembly again. And we are now going to move on to the final part. This next step is going to allow us to remove the laser in its entirety, including from the board side, so we can inspect it thoroughly and ensure the cable is seated properly. But first, we need to remove the screws securing it. So there are two screws, one here and one on the right side as well. Go ahead and loosen them and they should come out nice and easy. Of course, this one doesn't. There we go. They're fine down there. At this point, we can remove the first side of the laser, and it just sits on the left-hand side rail, so you can just slide that out and lift it out in its entirety. And there it is, the PS2 laser in all its glory. Is there anything better? Well, actually, no, no, just kidding. So what we're going to do next is now that we have an optimal viewing angle, we just want to make sure that the um, ribbon cable connector on the motherboard side looks okay, which mine does. You just want to make sure you're looking to see if there are any broken pins or any damaged pins or any pins missing. If all that is okay, we are now going to move on to the actual laser connector side. We have arrived at the height of tonight's show, ladies and gentlemen. So as you can see here, we have the laser with the ribbon cable still attached to the laser, secured by these two little plastic clips. Why Sony chose plastic is beyond me, but that's a discussion for another video, not here. So what you need to do is take some tweezers or other small devices or your fingers if you feel comfortable and very, 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 very gently pull up on those clips, which should in turn release the ribbon cable, allowing you to pull it out 
just like that. I cannot stress enough, be incredibly careful. While we did undo the ribbon cable from the board side, and this one actually looks perfect. Nothing out of the ordinary there or anything that would cause any issues. When we come down to the laser connection side here, I don't know if you guys can see it on camera. I can't zoom in anymore without sacrificing clarity. So you'll just have to take my word for it. There are a few damaged pins along here. These cannot be damaged. If even one pin is bad, that can cause the symptoms of the laser not spinning or even doing a half spin and then just saying, I'm out of here. So if your cable was okay, the next thing to do would be to reseat it securely with the laser removed to ensure you get a snug fit. Now that I've made a replacement cable magically appear, note if your, you inspected your cable and there was no damage, you do not have to worry about making a replacement magically appear, as not everyone has YouTube powers like I do. So once you have your cable that you are going to be using, the next part is to install it securely. And the reason I want to install it out of circuit is you can't get the necessary pressure all the time when you're trying to replace the ribbon cable while the laser is still installed in the unit. By removing the laser and the cable together, you now have the ability to not only see what you're doing, but use consistent force and have gravity help you to get a nice, secure, tight fit that should allow the laser to perform at its best. By using firm and gentle, I cannot stress the gentle part enough, pressure, you can see I was able to get a nice uniform fit, which in turn ensures that the laser signal is reaching all the pins of the rib ribbon cable, which in turn ensures that it is working properly. With that being out of the way, it is now time to reinstall the laser back into the unit. Before doing that, this is a great time to take some white lithium grease, just like that, and just give the rails that the laser will be sliding along just a little shot, just to ensure it has enough room and slide to perform at its best. Once that's done, you can take your laser. One side is, a, is enclosed and the other side is open. You can just drop that close side down into its position and clip in the other side. Just like that. So now that you have your console back together to this point, how about we test it out, shall we? I'm going to go ahead and turn this on and let me know if you notice anything different. I hope you just saw that fast spin of the laser. And as you can see, it spun more than half a turn at the speed that the laser is supposed to rev up at. So that is an indicator that not only is it installed correctly, but it only needs minor adjustments. All right, the final step before you call this a successful repair is just to make sure you have your laser properly adjusted for best performance. There are two ways to do this. The first being that cog wheel at the top. And the second is the adjustment pitch screw on the left side of this shot. These two screws combined will provide the optimal angle and height for the laser to read the data from the disc. Generally, there are two rules to follow. The first one being the cog wheel should either be this little clear dot should either be at the 11 o'clock or the 12 o'clock position as that provides the best angle for reading data off the disk. 
On the left side, on that height adjustment screw, it is recommended to have it just so the screw is sitting on the rail, just barely t making contact. These two combined should give you the optimal boot time and smooth gaming experience. And that's all there is to it. I hope this video helped you. If it did, you know what to do. And as always, I will see you guys on the next one.